The problem with asserting it at this point is, it's not due. 18.5 billion goes along for people like myself, because I'm a retiree out in the city of Detroit. But it's based on the actuary going out, right, on my life expectancy. Just like the other 24,000 retirees. And so, it's, and the easiest way I always explain it to people is just like you go out and buy a house, right? You go out and purchase a house, and whatever your house is, you take out a mortgage. You take out a mortgage for 15 years, or 30 years, or 10 years, or whatever you're going to do. The bank doesn't say, or whoever the mortgage from, they don't say, hey, give me my money today. That's why you set up a payment plan. And so throughout the necessary years, whether 10 years, 15 years, or 30 years, then your mortgage is paid off. Well, that's what this $18.5 billion is. It's not due today. It's due over time. Now, one would say, well, yeah, well, you got to fix it because you got to be able to pay for it. Well, currently right now, the pension system has enough funding in it currently right now to pay every retiree that is currently in the pension system for the next 12 years. Right. Now, why you won't have any money, why you won't have any money reverse back to what I told you earlier. What they're doing is, is that they're selling off the assets. When you sell off the assets, who's coming in and doing the work? Outsiders. Outsiders. So they lay off the employees, they bring in a private company, and you got it. It's just like Social Security, right? We get in Social Security, because I get it too. I'm 67 now, started getting mine last year, took my full Social Security. But guess what? If younger people are not coming into the system to pay for us, guess what happens? Dries up, don't it? Well, that's what's happening here. So they lay it off the city employees. They have RFPs to remove all city employees. They're giving the contracts and all these assets to their friend companies. And their friend companies, some of them are saying, well, you know what? We're going to give an employee an opportunity to work. We're going to offer them a job first. They may offer him a job first, but guess what? Have to pay. They're no longer in the pension system. Because the new company says, we're not going to do a pension system, we're going to do a 401k. And so they removed money from keep coming into the system to pay for the folks. And so people have to understand the mechanics of what's going on. And I always say to people, you just got to follow the dots. You follow the dots, put it together, and you easily figure it out. And you figured it out just as I started talking to you, what's going on. And so I'm working on this retirees committee that's appointed by the federal government. And as I said, I can't, can't really talk about that because I'm under, I'm under a gag order uh, because I'm in, in the mediation in, in that part. And certainly I don't want to be a federal person. And so, and so I can't divulge uh, the intricate workings of what's going on. But I am uh, bargaining very hard on the behalf of the retirees uh, for their pension benefits as well as their health care. Now, one of the things on the health care that people don't know, and you will probably hear this if I can get it out. I've been trying to get it out for the last few months. Uh, but I have a document here that's also in here. And it's a document that came from Blue Cross Blue Shield County Executive that handles the city of Detroit health care for Blue Cross Blue Shield. This account executive and when we did, and I should go back so I could preface this so you understand what happened. When we bargained a contract, one of the things that we were trying to do is say, how can we get savings, right? Savings not only for the employees, but for the employer. On the employer side, you want to make sure that the person who is offering the services are giving the municipality the best bang for the buck, right? And so when you're looking at that, whether it's Blue Cross, whether it's Health Alliance Plan or Total Health Care, you have to look at that administrative contract to talk about administrative fees, how they're paying bills, what they're charging for, rebates, and those kind of things. And then on the employee side, you look at how do you get the best benefit for folks <coughs> at the best price and the best service. 
quality of service. That was, that's what all of us want to make sure that when we get health care. This county executive, <coughs> after we had got the bids in for the different companies, Blue Cross Blue Shield did not come in as the best vendor. CVS Caremark and Health Alliance Plan came in as the best vendors. And so the city agreed with us to say, hey, the best bang for the buck is for us to go over here and remove Blue Cross because their costs are too high for both sides, for the city as well as for the employees. And so we did that to move that. Well, when they came in, when the state came in and took it over, guess who resurfaced? Blue Cross. Blue Cross. And so the memo that I have here that I've taken to the Wayne County Prosecutor, uh, as well as gave it to some news agencies, they haven't printed it yet, but the memo says from the county executive, and this is this email stuff again that you kind of heard in Detroit, even with Carmen Kirkpatrick, but this was an email. And this email says to the city, I will give you a 10% reduction because the administration fees were high. So in the memo it says, I'll give you a 10% reduction on your administration fees. I'll also cut you a check immediately for $2 million if you make us the only game in town. Can you believe that? That's a bribe. And so when I got a hold of the email, I said, I don't believe a county executive would put this in the email. The email also said, though, that if we do not get back in the game, whoever's in the game, we're going to charge them between $150,000 to $300,000 to get the data fee. Because Blue Cross Blue Shield <coughs> retains the data. Right, the utilization reports and all the other stuff that people would need to reduce the cost. So they said, if you don't put me back in, I'm gonna jack up the cost for these folks to get the data to provide the services. So when people say about what's actually and what's really going on, this book tells a lot because it actually has the documents in black and white about what's happening in the city of Detroit as opposed to people just telling people what's going on and nobody had the factual documents to look at. One of the other things that I might say to you is even on the consulting contracts, you've heard on the radio or TV that they, or in probably in the newspapers too because I got some newspaper articles that say the same thing, they said that these consulting contracts were being paid 50% by the state and 50% by the city. You've probably heard that. These contracts, when you look at them, say 100% city funded. So the state is not putting in a dime. And I think on a couple of shows, even on Flashback, Flashpoint or Flashback, whichever one it is, uh, you've heard even the governor them say that we're not giving any money to the city. And they're true. So they're not paying any parts of these consulting agreements. It's all being paid by the taxpayers. So why am I saying that again? Because it goes back to the insolvency issue that we're dealing with in bankrupt bankruptcy. Is the city insolvent? Can they pay their bills? Do they have the money to pay their bills? That's only one point that shows you that they can. Another issue that we're arguing in court that we had the documents for in addition to the consultants, all the money that they're paying, they're also paying $260 million in vendor contracts. These are to outside vendors. And then in addition to that, we've had city employees in almost every department that have been working overtime since February of this year. So what it says is that if in fact employees can continue to work overtime and they're being paid. It comes back to the insolvency issue. How is the city insolvent? And so money is flowing. Money is flowing. And there's been multiple times, and I've counted at least six, and I think I got the articles in here too, and if it's not, I have another book it's just like this, uh, that I have the newspaper clippings and stuff that they were putting out in here. But on six different occasions, they said the city was going to go broke, broke, go broke, 
a bankrupt if something didn't happen. So let me give you an example of that, and that shows you again where money is. The city floated a $137 million bond at one point. State treasurer then, Andy Dillon, who's no longer the state treasurer, says, I'm going to be the keeper of the money, because I don't know, you don't know how to earn this money. So I'm going to be the keeper of the money. But two of the things that he did needs to be taken a closer look at. And this is some other stuff that I moved to the prosecutor. Number one, Andy Lillard said to the city council at the <coughs> time, if you don't extend the contract of Ernest and Young, I'm not going to release $10 million. And there was a big fiasco about that. That lasted for about a week. And then finally the city council said, okay, <coughs> we're, we're going to give the contract extended to Ernest and Young for another year, and then Andy Dillon released $10 million. That's what they call a no bid contract, right? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, unless you give it to him, I'm not going to give you any money. It's a no bid contract. The second instance came when he said, for me to release $20 million, you got to hire the law firm of Miller Canfield. That went on for about a two-week fight. Finally, the council gave in and said, hey, we need our money. All right, we're going we're gonna to hire the company you want us to hire. And so they hired Miller Canfield. He released $20 million. What's the significance about that? It's a bribe. It's a bribe. And we had somebody else that's in jail right now for 28 years, because guess what they did? A no-bid contract with Cinegro in the water department. So I'm saying those things have got to be looked at for people to deal with the magnitude of what's going on in the city of Detroit. And so as I go around, the reason why I carry this book and the reason why I have another one in my car is because when I talk to people, a lot of times people will say, I don't believe that guy. He's just talking a bunch of crap and he's just trying to fill out a hit with stuff. But here's the actual documents that people can see that are signed. These are paid invoices that I also have in here that are signed by the emergency uh, manager, uh, Mr. Orr, that shows the invoices that he's paying out. It shows the overages that I just talked about uh, in some of these with these advisory fees, where some of these contracts said that they're supposed to be paid 162000 every other week. But when you look at the invoices, uh, and I'll just give you one just for an instance, just to show you. This year alone, this is the one invoice, and this is from, this is from Miller Buck Fire. In Miller Buck Fire, in February, they were paid $291,600. March, they were paid $162,000. April, $162,000. May, $162,000. June 162,000. This is in addition to the 1.8 million dollars that was their contract. But nobody wants to talk about that. And what happened with these things is they're called, if you're unfamiliar with it, in municipal government, it's called change orders. But nobody talks about the change orders because this is all secret. What happened is that Mr. Orr, and I have a copy of that, his document says, so he's not letting the public know, and, and it's public funds, so the public ought to know how their money's being spent. But in the left-hand corner on the top of the documents, they say private and confidential. <laughs> City Council had none of these documents. I was able to get them through a good source. <laughs> And I provided them to the city council so they could see it. And then they raised the issue at city council to find out why they're not getting these documents. Even though the emergency manager's in charge, they're still supposed to be getting copies of these documents. But they're not. 